We have a disaster. What happened here on December 22nd, 2008, this was a watershed moment. The Kingston spill was a signature collapse of a coal ash site. In an instant, we knew we couldn't live there. They were making money off of us and killing us at the same time. You couldn't get away from it. We have gone above and beyond. We've restored this area to better than it was. It is completely recovered. But I mean, they're still responsible for what they've done to our community. Hey, I'm Jim Matheny, and this is TVA's Kingston Fossil Plant. It's one of the largest coal power plants in the country. But on December 22nd, 2008, this site was where you would find one of the country's largest environmental disasters. That's when the wall on a large storage pond where TVA stored the leftover ash from burning decades of coal collapsed. It unleashed an avalanche of sludge into neighborhoods and the Emory River. In this special, reporter Grant Robinson and I will show you what has changed in the last 10 years for the landscape here and the people. We'll also show you the difference in how TVA stores coal ash, and we'll get into the legal fights that are still not settled over the dangers and damage from this ash, a byproduct of burning coal for electric power. Now, after the ash spill hit, I was actually here that night, one of the first reporters out here in the dark trying to figure out what in the world was going on. So let's go back through the archives and we'll show you exactly what happened. But this disaster 10 years ago, it actually started building long before that. TVA finished building the Kingston steam plant in 1955. At the time, it was the largest coal power plant in the world. It generated massive amounts of electricity and pollution. Last year, the utility used a total of nearly 36 million tons of coal. During the plant's first few decades, tiny particles of fly ash flew out of these short smokestacks and routinely coated the community in dust. TVA tried to keep people happy by cleaning the ash from their houses and their cars for free. The plant eventually built two giant smokestacks that could collect most of the fly ash before it escaped. But the plant still pumped plenty of pollution in the atmosphere that came down as acid rain. Kingston steam plant will not comply with EPA standards by emitting too much sulfur dioxide into the air. While most of the concern about pollution focused on the air, a mountain of waste grew on the ground. That's where TVA built dams to create large ponds between the steam plant and the Emory River. And every year it dumped millions of tons of ash in the ponds, where it settled to the bottom for wet storage to keep the dust down. We sluice the ash out to the pond, the ash settles out, it flows over to a stilling pond where there's further settling, and that's where we discharge from. With pollution in the air and ash piling higher and higher, TVA engineers had already raised red flags in the 1980s about the stability of the ash ponds, but always opted for a short-term fix, because overhauling the whole system could cost tens of millions of dollars. Then, three days before Christmas in 2008, the dam finally broke on a billion dollar disaster. At approximately 1 a.m., an ash containment area on the north side of Kingston Fossil Plant failed. Wind was breaking, furniture turning over, the house was shifting around. A tidal wave of ash ripped Jim Sheen's house off its foundation and shoved it across the street while he was still inside. His only goal, get out alive. All the stuff can be replaced except for me. The doors were jammed shut. So I kicked the wind out, climbed out the window before the house completely collapsed because it was popping and cracking when I was going out the window. Like I told the nurse, I don't usually go to church every Sunday, but I believe I'll go this Sunday. Sheen escaped without any injuries, and nobody else was hurt by the initial slide. That's because it broke after midnight when there were luckily no cars on the road or people outside when Angie and Jeff Spurgeon heard an avalanche of ash bury their neighborhood. I remember vividly when it happened. I thought a tornado coming through. The whole cove that we lived on was full of ash and mud and trees and docks were gone. And It's sinking in. What a major catastrophe this is, and I'm right there in the middle of it. Sludge, ash, whatever they want to call it, pretty much everywhere. Well, it's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. This whole area out here is going to turn into one big soup bowl. It already has. Millions of gallons of sludge containing toxic materials flowed into the lake where people play and towns get their water. 
We know there's one water intake downstream about four miles from here, and then we've been in touch with them. They have their water sampling. The air we breathe and the water we drink meet all government safety standards. But it's definitely killing the fish. They're dying. I mean, they can't breathe in that. TVA began digging out what it could and using helicopters to scatter grass seeds on the mountains of ash. A helicopter comes flying over and there's a dozer next door and they're tearing down the porch of my neighbor's house. You're bombarded. I'm worried about health. I'm worried about where I'm going to stay. We had saved and built that house and then in an instant we knew we couldn't live there. We're going to leave there and it was a wonderful place to live. I think it's starting to sink in that uh, I've lost everything that I've worked for my entire life. People directly hit by the spill looked for new housing. The fear of toxins in the ash spread for families expecting children, with heavy trucks tracking sludge all around town. It's kind of a fear of the unknown, but my understanding is if you breathe that, it's one of the worst dangers. Crews in charge of the early cleanup tried to calm people's concerns. This is just a piece of the ash. This is the, the material that was, was in the dredge cells. But this moonscape soon had people in Roan County seeing stars. Aaron? A law firm paid Aaron Brockovich to come to Harriman. And this environmental activist, famously portrayed in a Hollywood movie, spoke to a packed house of potential plaintiffs. I am here first and foremost for you and my choice of who I thought would be the best legal team to help you. Those guys are, are sharks. We don't need a bunch of uh, out-of-state attorneys and sharks roaming the waters looking for victims. As TVA put it, they promised to make people whole again and started buying homes for what it said was more than the appraised value. And people who sold had to sign an agreement not to sue. But these offers were take it or leave it, no negotiations. Many said TVA's offer was too low to buy an identical house somewhere else. You're not going to be able to have what you had here for what they're offering you? It not close. I said, no, I'm not losing money because you screwed up the environment. But not taking the offer would leave them to live in a disaster area as ash coated their cars and the air filters inside their homes. They said either you're going to take what we gave you or you can sit there and eat it. And we've been eating it. It's terrible. It's just something you couldn't imagine living in. Over time, most holdouts sold out. What's the point of living on a lake house when you can't get in the lake and you can't fish in it, you can't boat on it? It became where there was no choice. We had to leave. That's not right. TVA bought 180 properties affected by the spill. As for the actual cleanup, TVA's crews started carefully removing ash from the Emory River. But they were doing it too carefully and slow. So in May 2009, the EPA stepped in and picked up the pace. To really zero in on what needs to be done to move it faster. And it's somebody different than the organization that created the problem. And to have the EPA on board, I think, is just so much better. So this is all ash that's come out of the river. That's dredging material. Big pieces of iron dip it out of the ditch. This used to be all ash. Contact is a small risk element. What Really what you're worried about is ingestion or inhalation of ash. Crews finished removing 600 million gallons of ash from the river in late spring of 2010. Then they began building an earthquake-proof wall and a protective cap around the 240 acres of ash left on the ground. We've got all that gray ash out of there. We put a liner over it, a couple of feet of topsoil and clay over that, and planted grass on it. But the cost of recovery involved more than removing and burying ash. TVA gave millions to repair the image and economy of nearby towns and Roan County, plus $32 million to Roan County schools. In all, the cleanup costs TVA $1.2 billion. The utility says it has not had to increase rates because it makes enough money to spread the cost out over 15 years and still make a profit. If people visit us, they'll never recognize that you had an environmental disaster. TVA also tore down 100 homes and transformed the neighborhood into a public park with trails, fishing docks, and sports fields. As for the homes that were left standing, TVA sold 60 of them at auction in 2015. 
and some of the buyers were the same families forced to leave, including the Spurgeons, who felt safe living on the lake they love. I don't see flash on my vehicles or anything. So I was fine with coming back. You almost have to look at it like that's one phase of our life and that's over and we're not going to be bitter. While the Spurgeons have moved on, there's still some sadness over the spill scattering a beloved group of neighbors. There was a lot of good people over there. You know, I mean, a park is nice, but it's not what it was. Now, after the ash spill hit here, TVA did not stop burning coal at the Kingston plant. It kept making power and kept creating lots of ash. Coming up, we'll show you how they store the ash now and why TVA says it reduces the chance of another disaster.